Hello, I'm Alpa Patel. With BBC World News, Japan's Prime Minister speaks about the immeasurable suffering his country caused in the Second World War. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has made a much-anticipated statement about the legacy of World War II for Japan and other countries. Well, with me is Dr. John Svensson Wright, head of the Asia program at the foreign affairs think tank Chatham House. Also joining me is uh, Raymond Lee, who's the editor of the BBC's Chinese service. Thank you both for joining me. John, to you first. Um, what did you make of this speech? Did he actually apologise? He didn't. The uh, government's future cabinets um, see this speech. What will the legacy be? Moment. Um, Prime Minister Abe also spoke about the suffering of the so-called comfort women during the war. Hundreds of women in China and Korea were forcibly recruited to serve Japanese soldiers in military brothels. Well, uh, joining me is Raymond Lee from our, uh, the BBC's Chinese service. How will China be seeing this speech, um, the so-called comfort women, a real bone of contention so far in China on social media and so on? Um, how will this speech be seen in Japan, future generations, younger generations? Uh, how will they be, uh, you know, what will they make of this speech? Svensson Wright and Raymond Lee, thank you very much. China is to launch a nationwide inspection of dangerous chemicals after two huge explosions ripped apart an industrial complex in the port city of Tianjin. Thousands of users across Chinese social media have been paying tribute to firefighters who lost their lives in the blaze. At least 17 firefighters died. Officials in the United States are investigating reports that the so-called Islamic State group used chemical weapons, a chemical weapons expert, and he recently worked in Syria and Iraq. Thank you for coming in for us. How do we, what, what evidence is there that there's this alleged use of chemical weapons? Have these chemical weapons originated from? Well, it's likely that... Hamish de Breton Gordon there, thank you very much for coming in. Stay with us on BBC World News, still to come. Swedish prosecutors have dropped two sexual assault claims against Julian Assange because of time limits. The WikiLeaks founder has always denied the accusations. He remains in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He's been there since 2012 when he sought asylum to avoid being extradited to Sweden. The UK government is making a formal protest to Ecuador over its decision to grant asylum. Ben Bland explains the key issues in this long-running case. This is BBC World News. I'm Alpa Bittel. The latest headlines. This Saturday marks the 70th anniversary of the day Japan's surrender brought an end to World War II. Among those who fought and survived is Jerry Yellen, who flew combat missions over Japan and for many years struggled to come to terms with what happened. But what he's now found, forgiveness. And he told our Tokyo correspondent, Rupert Wingfleel Hayes, this is his report. The Greek government has won enough support in Parliament to accept a new international bailout plan. This comes after tense negotiations throughout the night. The Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras says he doesn't regret agreeing to the deal, but our correspondent in Athens, Paul Adams, says he may pay a heavy price for compromising with Eurozone leaders. The achievements of Lee Kuan Yew, the man credited with leading Singapore to independence, have been making their mark in an unlikely fashion. His life story has been made into a musical stage show. Mr Lee, who died in March of this year, was seen as an authoritarian leader in real life. Sharon Jill Leal went to find out how his achievements were transferred into song. A reminder of our top story. Stay with us on BBC World News.